Arunas Bazokas and Katsucha Devinova. How are you? Hi, Julian. Very well. How are you? Good, good. How is going for you? What What's your day look like now? It's um, it's busy, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, there's a lot of things that um, I think everyone can find to do. We have um, things that we need to catch up with and things that we um actually i always wanted to do but maybe didn't have enough time so yeah i'm keeping myself occupied um actually uh, there's um uh, a lot of activity if um, you take even with our dance organizations we having wdo meetings every week we are doing that on zoom uh, many decisions to be made uh, because of uh, championships that needed to be cancelled uh, so um, yeah lots of uh, lots of stuff that um, needs to be taken care of yes for sure um, on your video what we're gonna see soon you were showing that you were cooking for yourself how often normally you cook for yourself or is it just now because you have more time I normally don't cook for myself at all that's something that I try to learn um, it's, um, um, it's, it's too difficult for me, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> what was your most successful dish you made? <laughs> I can't say I had much success. It was eatable, but I can't say I, I, I thought it was most delicious. So, <laughs> so I so think I have a long way, I have a long way to go before I can, um, uh, cook something that would be really tasty. <laughs> You're trying to say if you if you're so good and whatever you do, you cannot be that good and everything else. <laughs> yeah, I wish you know you could be good at uh, anything you wanted to be good at, and uh, yeah, I think it's um, uh, not transferable one <laughs> from one area to another. You can be good at one, <laughs> not so good at the other. Uh, I don't, you know, maybe there are people that. Uh, so universal that they can be good at everything, but um, <laughs> definitely not me. You have time. Uh, you know, I know you like more than 20 years and you always seems to be very serious. I remember that little studio at uh, Norwich studio when you had lessons with Edita like thousands of years ago. And e even when you were a little kid, you were such a professional, you know, the way you look, the way you act. I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's some fun side of you. What it could be? What can you share with us? What like really funny about you? I, I think for others maybe it's easier to say this fun side to me. I think I, I have a lot of fun going through my life and I enjoy it. Um, so uh, I think um, it's probably different how you come across to some people and how you feel how you feel that yourself. So you see, I, I didn't know that I, I made that impression on you <laughs> all these years back, <laughs> that I was serious um, even when I was very young. <laughs> well, I think um, I, we all probably have certain um, same way of looking at things and uh, maybe I tend to look at things sometimes overly serious, I don't know. Um, That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's but anything um, fun, like you can share with us, like something what very silly you sometimes feel like, and you want to do things. Well, there were things that actually Katusha and I we uh, we at first we said we should never share, but as as time goes by, we we think um, it's okay to share now, and I think we did share in some interviews. Uh, one of the stories about our first Asian tour is many competitions. So in Asian tour, we had that first year nine competitions, um, and it was like 
dancing the con, flying, dancing next day, intense. So two weeks right intense. And the last competition in Macau. Uh, and we stayed in Venetian, uh, which is beautiful hotel. And the competition was there in Venetian, same as in Vegas, but I think even probably bigger than in Vegas in Macau. So we are preparing and Katusha calls me and she says, I can't believe it. It's such a beautiful hotel, so spacious, but in the bathroom, the only power plug is under this table with difficult to reach. And then hair dryer, the cord of the hair dryer is that short. So <laughs> the only way <laughs> yes. you can do a hairstyle is go under the table. I said, yeah, so it is stupid. So she did the hair. Then I actually did the same thing. I took a hair dryer plug it in also <laughs> under the table. Now, as I finished doing my hair, I, started, I kind of pulled the like hair dryer and the cord pulled. And you know, that was one of those retractable cords. <laughs> so, so yeah, so something that uh, we thought, okay, we shouldn't tell because that's really silly <laughs> to do your hairstyle under the table. Yeah, that's funny how you have to adjust sometimes, especially yeah, like yeah. you have sport life. <laughs> That's cool. What the craziest thing you've done in your life? Like really crazy, crazy really stuff. Crazy. That Not I think well, everyone, everyone's got their own standards. What's um, crazy for me may be completely normal for the other person. <laughs> <laughs> I can so, see that. Um, I don't think I've done that. Something that would that extraordinary, crazy. And when I look back, um, I think taking off with a hot air balloon, uh, that was a bit crazy because, you know, the landing was rough and uh, we actually, uh, we fell off that cart and all got bruised. So when I look back, I thought maybe we shouldn't have done that. Um, but at the same time, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Was it, it like any beautiful. good, like when you were really high? What did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, since I never tried drugs, never tried any kind of drugs. So, um, um, never got too high. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to understand that, but okay. Which side of you you think people don't know about you? Well, I don't think you can know everything about anyone. I'm probably going to be sides left. It. <laughs> so serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you take my self, I can't say that probably there's a side them particularly hiding so yeah i don't have anything to disclose that would be a, a surprise to anyone i would assume okay i see you don't look like a very open person but <laughs> <laughs> no, i cannot I mean, drag it from I, you i mean uh, it's uh, it's all um, a matter of uh, how you you look at it i i actually don't think uh, I have anything that would be so special that would be worth hiding. So it's kind of difficult to find something that I would think, okay, now if I disclose, that's... Anything that's from your childhood? Deal. Sorry? Anything from your childhood? No, no particular traumas. <laughs> no particular... You were a good boy all the time, right? <laughs> no, actually, I'm, uh, that's not true. I was a very naughty boy. I, oh, well, now I, we're talking. Yeah, so see, when I was very, very young, I actually, I tried to do all the naughty things that I could think of at that time. So, you know, trying, see, I never said, I never tried drugs, but I tried smoking and drinking at a very early age, uh, way too early than I think anyone should. So, um, uh, what age so are you that, talking about? That's talking really early. It's like, you know, uh, before 10 years old. So that's, Whoa. that's strange actually <laughs> it's so, so hard to picture you <laughs> yeah yeah and actually yeah when i look back i think yeah that was really strange but then you see i lost interest altogether so when i tried it and i thought yeah that's not something that i enjoy doing at all what kind of fun things you do right now like in your daily basis well i don't do fun things now actually i only do serious stuff <laughs> i can see it on your face yeah it, <laughs> Even the, you know, when you just watch TV, I watch documentaries because I enjoyed it more. Actually, mm -hmm. I noticed I don't fancy watching so, so much just, you know, I used to love comedies. I used to watch comedies all the time. 
I was with my my dad. We watched um, uh, some old comedies. Um, Operatsa uh, E. If you remember that um, Soviet movie about Shurik. Yes, yes, yes. That comedy. Yeah, that, yeah, that was. Uh, that was actually I love those um, old comedies. So yeah, we watched a couple of those, and then um, I'm not sure if how to um, translate correctly Caucasian and or um, Kafkaska uh, plenty. Plenty. Yeah, <laughs> or you know plenty. how to translate that into English to, so that it. It's very be. old old school Russian movies. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think we're going what. 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. 1960s, something. Yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah, but um, good humor. I, I, I like it. What What do you do right now? What kind of projects you would work like if everything would be normal? Well, I would be doing same what I, what I'm doing if it's not normal. When it's not normal, uh, we do a lot of planning. We actually work on uh, the structure of our organization. So that is something that we can uh, that I would. Be doing anyway so uh, in addition to that i would be of course traveling and teaching and yeah. adjudicating so that part is not happening and uh, uh which is very strange because uh, i'm used Feels to being strange, right? on the road uh, all the time yeah so that's something that i can't say whether i like it or don't it's actually uh, in some ways uh, the contrast is interesting what are you missing but then from your life from your regular life, what are you missing the most right now? I guess yeah, being around people that um, I enjoy being, you know, mm -hmm. for, uh, for our life. So we get to, uh, you know, in the, whether it's teaching situation, the competitions, we get to meet the people that we like. So I miss that part, being able to communicate in person. But it's not, I think, as difficult as it would have been like 30 or more years ago when there was no all these social platforms, all these applications sure. that enables us to to do what we're doing now, to talk and see each other. So, um, so that is um, uh, compensating, but still, of course, uh, uh, being able to meet um, in person and being at the same places is um, um, something that I miss. Mm -hmm. I have last question. Tell me. Uh, I'm just trying to make you smile because it's really hard for me. <laughs> You're so serious all the time. I'm smiling. I'll have, to, I'm smiling. I'll have to bring that question. You have to watch video. I smiled many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have to remind you your experience of dancing Latin and the competitions. What can you say about that? Yes, I got the smile. <laughs> I like I like Latin a lot. Uh, I you know. It just turned out that I was better in ballroom eventually, but uh, uh, yeah, Latin and it was I was reasonably good, um, especially when I was junior and youth, early amateur days. I think uh, Latin was going um, sometimes as good as ballroom, and I think in juniors there was a time when Latin was even better than ballroom. So. Um, what did you like about Latin? Like, what what part of you in the Latin form you love the most? Well, I think I liked it in the same way as ballroom. It was about the movement mm -hmm. and uh, music, but uh, Latin was free. Uh, so I think I liked that part where uh, it wasn't as restricted if you take a structure of the dance. And how it feels to have connection with your partner when you can actually look at her eyes. Yeah, it, it's, it's a good way of communicating. Okay. <laughs> good point. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I hope that one day you're going to make some show when you can show everyone <laughs> how you look and like it. I've seen that live in Germany, <laughs> German Open. <laughs> Probably one of the last yeah, of the fighting yeah, competitions. Probably, yeah, yeah, many yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah well, definitely. Good talking to you. So yeah, stay, me stay, too. Stay yeah, thank healthy. you so much. Take care. You too. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Hey everyone, I hope you all keeping well, healthy, and safe. It's a difficult time, and um, I think uh, we have to keep our spirits up as much as possible stay positive and i just would like to share with you some of the things that i do in order to stay in good shape and be positive 
So um, personally, of course, I try to keep as fit as I can. So exercising is usually the start of my daily routine. Then I do some work on laptop. And actually, there's so many things that I find to do, things that I always wanted to do but never had enough time. So I have, have some more time now, so I'm doing that. So, um, And I'm sure that all of you find a lot of things to be occupied with, so I do that in my little office here. And, uh, you know, we always um, need to learn something, actually. And now it's a bit of a necessity, so I'm trying to learn to cook something. So now I'm trying to do these um, pancakes. I'm not sure if you can see. It's um, cabbage. And um, yeah, so uh, we'll see how it's going to come up. Um, I try to do uh, soup, um, cabbage soup as well. So that's interesting. Uh, we're on that theme. And um, um, I'm also watching a lot of documentaries, and that's um, something that um, was um, on my schedule for, for a while. And um, um, Second World War was um, the latest that I watched, and uh, as uh, I was watching it, I think um, uh, the situation we are in now is not as difficult as it is. Um, that some people have been through and watching some documentaries uh, puts a lot of things into perspective. So anyway, that's a little bit of me. Uh, I'm in Lithuania right now. I've been here for about a month in lockdown and um, yeah, trying to keep well, healthy and safe. And I hope all of you are healthy and safe. Take care and all the best to you.